morning, everybody. I'm Hans. I am, um, I am CEO and uh, founder of Tappable. And I'm afraid that what you're looking at, the cane and the limp, is not a gimmick to draw your attention. It's not an impersonation of Dr. House either. It's sadly enough a uh, souvenir of a recent skiing trip. Tappable is an AMP story building tool that will be launching as a SaaS product in about a month. It is a it is a spin-off of our fintech activities in Africa. And over the next 15 minutes, I will try and explain why AM stories were instrumental to our business in Kenya and how they can be instrumental for your business. As I look around the audience, I see a lot of people that are probably active in the more mature markets. So what I would like to do is actually put a little bit of a broader perspective on things. This is a demographic map of the world. It focuses on the median age of the main um, regions in the world. And if we just compare Africa to North America, Africa has nearly four times the population of North America. The median age in Africa is under 20 years old. In North America, it is just over 38. If we work that back, there are now 600 million people young people under 20 in Africa, but there are only about 80 million people under 20 in North America. Now you may ask, what has this got to do on a technology conference, right? So let's have a look, a closer look at a few countries. This is Indonesia. And Indonesia is leading the world in e-commerce. No less than 87% of the Internet users made a purchase online in December 2018. I'm sure if there are e-commerce people in the room, they'd be pretty jealous. Or a bit closer to here, the Philippines. For four years in a row, Filipino Internet users lead the world in Internet consumption. More than 10 hours per day on average. 99% of the Internet users are on Facebook. Or let's go to the other side, to Brazil. 98% of internet users in Brazil are watching video online. That means that in Brazil, YouTube easily outperforms Facebook. Now, what do these three countries have in common? Well, very simple. They all have a huge population that is young and that is digitally savvy. A population that adapts to new technologies easily and very quickly, that wants new technologies. From this perspective, I'd like to ask you now, where do you think that your customers will be in 10 years' time? The home market for our fintech activities is Kenya. We're working there on improving financial capabilities of people through data and technology. We currently have two products live on the market, and I will talk about them in a minute. But why did we actually choose Kenya as a product for our fintech activities? Well, that's very simple. Kenya is leading the world on mobile wallets. Now, you may see from the slide that 49% of you are saying, that's probably, you know, why is he talking about that, right? But in reality, this comes closer to a nearly full 100% mobile wallet penetration. Why? Because you need to be 18 years old to have a mobile money account in Kenya, and because the median age in Kenya of the people is under 20. Right? Do the maths yourself. So let me introduce you to Paul. Paul exemplifies the average working population in Kenya. 78% of the adults in Kenya work in the informal economy. They have no monthly salary. Their revenue fluctuates from day to day. Paul is a driver. He drives for Uber, for Taxify, and also for Little Cap, which is a local platform. He continuously switches between platforms to get the best rides. His customers pay him with mobile money from their phone onto his phone. His smartphone really is the nerve center of his business. Every single day, Paul uses about 500 megabytes of data, and he calls for about half an hour. And that's just to run his business. Like most other Kenyans, he buys his airtime and data on a daily prepaid basis. 
and he has a dual SIM phone, and he switches between operators to get the best deals that are available. But the problem is that there are more than 200 bundles on the market in Kenya at any given time. Information about them is very difficult to get by, and when you get it, it is very unclear and very often even misleading. So we build Boost, and Boost is our comparative website and chatbot that allows people like Paul to select, to analyze, to compare, and to purchase the best bundle that meets their requirements and that meets their budgets. But here comes the problem. How do we tell Paul which bundle is the best for him? How do we inform him that he can save money or get better value for money? How do we send Paul tips and tricks? Well, we tried it, as you can see. We tried it by publishing 800-word blog posts, and we failed absolutely miserably. So have you ever tried to read a long text on a small screen of a $35 smartphone in Kenya? Well, we did, and it wasn't the best user experience. So we had to find a different way. We had to make our content attractive and easy to read. So we started testing AMP stories with our users. We condensed our content to only a handful of pages. We focused on visuals that would appeal to younger users, which are our users. We really cut the text down to the absolute minimum, and that is far less than a tweet. And we started sending out these stories as notifications in our chatbot. But we had a major issue with that, because we had to code every single story from scratch. And that took us three to four days. And that's hardly a scalable solution in a business, right? The result of our AMP stories was way beyond our expectations. It just blew our socks off. Our content got finally read. We went from a session time of 20 seconds for our blog posts to nearly four minutes for our stories. People just automatically connected to our content. And what's more, 87% of our users clicked through to the very end of the stories. So at this point, we started to understand the power of AMP stories. And we also understood that we needed to develop a story building tool first so that we could scale. So it was at this point that we decided to launch Tappable as a spin-off of our fintech activities. So let's take a clo closer look at the power of AMP stories. In this presentation, we focus essentially on the effect that, power that AMP stories can have in emerging markets, right? But don't forget that all AMP story design principles apply equally to mature markets, so don't just run away as yet. Emerging markets are smartphone markets. Only a minority of users access the internet from a desktop, as you can see behind me. Smartphone ownership continues to grow double digit year on year, and this will continue. We all know that stories are the ideal format for smartphones. And using stories to communicate with, our, with your audience in these markets is simply a no-brainer. But in all of these markets, there is an enormous variety in smartphones, smartphone brands, models, and versions. Through second-hand sales, old models hang around for years and years. Screen sizes are between three and a half and six and a half inches. So how on earth do you design content for, these, for this variety of, um, of screen sizes? Well, not the way that social media is doing it. If you have a recent uh, smartphone, this will be familiar to you, right? In three of the four formats you see behind me, the text is cut off. Your user is put, is, is put off by this, and he just clicks away. And that's not the case with AMP stories. The M story format is responsive and it fits all screens perfectly. The content is permanently visible and the user is kept fully engaged and clicks through to the end. This has been one of the main success factors of our activities in Boost. If I take Kenya as an example, the mobile network inf infrastructure of operators is rather weak in some areas. Broadband internet is mainly limited to the big cities and to the roads that are connecting the big cities. Because AMP stories are responsive, are loading responsively, 
our users aren't looking at the spinning wheel for minutes. They start consuming the content as it is loading on their screens. This again has been a major contributor to higher session time and completion rates. Posting our content through social media was simply not an option for us. The Facebook algorithm decides who will see our content. That is, unless we pay for ads. But we can reach our entire contact database with AMP stories. We can segment as much as we like, and we can send specific content to specific segments. We can connect users to more in-depth information of relevant topics by means of specific call to actions on pages. And this has been an incredibly powerful tool for us. Most of the information that we put in our stories has a long shelf life. Network operators don't change their bundles every 24 hours, right? User recommendations don't change overnight. The 24-hour life cycle of social media stories is just an impediment to our business. We want to keep our stories online for as long as we want, and AMP stories allow us to do so. We started making stories because every story has a link, and because we can send that link to our customers. How do we do that? Pretty much any way we like. We often put the link in an SMS message for the simple reason that SMS is still the marketing tool of choice in Kenya. Let's try and see how this works. If you're staying in Tokyo for a few more days, I suggest you just send an SMS with Tokyo to 1470 460 6460, and we'll send you back a tappable story guide of the coolest places to visit in Tokyo and the hottest restaurants and bars. But our choice of distribution channels is practically endless. We put links in stories to our chatbot and in emails, in our tweets or in our WhatsApps. We embed stories in our app and also our website, or we send push notifications. We link to stories from a QR code. So why should you use AMP Stories? Because it is simply the ideal format to have your content read on smartphones. And all across the world, more and more users are accessing the internet from their smartphones. You should use AMP stories because they're versatile. Whatever the phone, whatever the speed of the internet connection, the user will always have a good experience. And a good user experience leads to engagement, and engagement leads to higher conversion rates. And most importantly, you should use AMP stories because you are in control. You decide who receives your content, you decide the distribution of your content, and you decide how long your content will stay alive. With AMP Stories, you are in control, not Facebook. We create a tappable to solve our problems that we specifically, that we specifically had, and we're putting it out, and the product will be live very soon. So get the Tokyo Guide, you can scan the, bar, the, uh, the QR code, get the Tokyo, Tokyo Guide and just find out how powerful the story, the tappable uh, story builder will be. Or you can sign up for early access on tappable.co. But most importantly, enjoy your day in Tokyo. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>